Hello everyone, and welcome to episode 5 of Reading Nern, the miniature lore series where I, the Wayward Breton, take you on a magical journey across Tamriel, picking up random books and reading them. Uh, this episode, I uh, decided to go in a completely different direction from uh, where I've been going in the last couple of episodes and talk about Daedra instead of Akatosh and Alduin and pretty much anything that has to do with dragons. Um... So yeah, the book that uh, I'll be reading uh, for this episode um, is uh, The Book of Daedra. Uh, and as always, there will be a link uh, to the book uh, text in the description uh, for, you to, for you to go follow along with um, if you cannot uh, read the, the, the book along with us in the video. Uh, so without further ado, The Book of Daedra. These are excerpts from this lengthy tome describing the nature of each of the Daedra. Azura, whose sphere is dusk and dawn, the magic in between realms of twilight, known as Moonshadow, Mother of the Rose, and Queen of the Night Sky. Boethia, whose sphere is deceit and conspiracy, and the secret plots of murder, assassination, treason, and unlawful overthrow of authority. Clavicus Vile, whose fear is the granting of power and wishes through ritual invocations and pact. Hermaeus Mora, whose fear is the scrying of the tides of fate, of the past and future, as read in the stars and heavens, and whose dominion are the treasures of the knowledge and memory. Hircin, whose fear is the hunt, the sport of Daedra, the great game, the chase, known as the huntsman and the father of man-beasts. Malakath, whose fear is the patronage of the spurned and ostracized, the keeper of the sworn oath and the bloody curse. Mehrunes Dagon, whose fear is destruction, change, revolution, energy, and ambition. Mephala, whose fear is obscured to mortals, known by the names Web Spinner, Spinner, and Spider, whose only consistent theme seems to be interference in the affairs of mortals for her amusement. Meridia, whose fear is obscured to mortals, who is associated with the energies of living things. Molag Ball, whose fear is the domination and enslavement of mortals, whose desire is to harvest the souls of mortals and to bring mortals' souls within his sway by spreading seeds of strife and discord in the mortal realms. Namira, whose sphere is the ancient darkness, known as the Spirit Daedra, ruler of sundry dark and shadowy spirits, associated with spiders, insects, slugs, and other repulsive creatures which inspire mortals with an instinctive revulsion. Nocturnal, whose sphere is the night and darkness, who is known as the Night Mistress. Periite, whose sphere is the ordering and the lowest orders of oblivion, known as the Taskmaster. Sanguine, whose sphere is hedonistic revelry and debauchery, and passionate indulgences of darker natures. Sheogorath, whose sphere is madness and whose motives are unknowable. Vernima, whose sphere is the realm of dreams and nightmares, and from whose realms issues forth evil omens. Especially marked for special interest under the heading Malakath, you find reference to Scourge, blessed by Malakath and dedicated to the use of mortals. In short, the reference suggests that any Daedra attempting to invoke the weapon's powers will be expelled into the void streams of oblivion. Of the legendary artifacts of the Daedra, many are well known like Azura's Star and Sheogorath's Wabajak. Others are less well known like Scourge, Makan's Hammer, Bane of Daedra. Yet, though Malakath blessed Scourge to be potent against his Daedra kin, he thought not that it should fall into Daedra hands, then to serve as a tool for private war amongst Caitiff and Forsaken. Thus did Malakath curse the device such that, should any dark kin seek to invoke its powers, that a void should open and swallow that Daedra, and purge him into Oblivion's void streams, from thence to pathfind back into the real and unreal worlds in the full order of time. So yeah. 
Um, basically, what the book is talking about is the spheres of of a uh, or dominion of each of the Daedra or Daedric princes. Um, there, there's a lot more to the Daedra um, than is revealed in this book, um, and mo most of it is uh, is scattered amongst amongst other books and I'm, I'm sure I will get to them eventually um, uh, but this uh, especially in regard to that last little bit um, Malakath's weapon uh, Daedra can't use it um, well they can but they'll be spat into what they call the void streams of oblivion uh, which are basically uh, what is or rather, what isn't Nern or Oblivion? Um, it, it's basically just dark, empty space. Like, you, there is no light. It's just pure darkness. And uh, there, there isn't really <clears throat> any way to get out of it. Um, so you can see uh, the problem in a, in a Daedra using Malakath's weapon. Um... So it says the void streams, but it's not really streams. Um, I mean, you can get from one plane of oblivion to another through the void streams, but doing so is impossible. So, yeah, take that whichever way you want to uh, to look at it. But, alas, if you have any questions about this book. Uh, or any of the Daedra in particular, uh, you can leave them in the comments. <coughs> you can leave them in the comments uh, below, or you can email me at waywardbreton.gmail.com, or you can follow me on Twitter. Uh, it's at waywardbreton. All of those things will be in the description below uh, for you to check out. Um, so yeah, uh, subscribe for more uh, more readings. Uh, if you have any suggestions on books that you want to hear. Uh, please let me know um, in in the in any of the aforementioned uh, places. Uh, so yeah, uh, that'll be it for this episode. Um, I am the Wayward Brighton, and I will see you guys later. <laughs>